good noon. The custom is to ask, am I audible? But in my case, I have created an exception by asking, can you all see me, please? In the light of the fact that the size of podium is increasing day by day, uh, somebody uh, rightly advised me out of his wisdom that you must be asking another question. And that is, can you all see me, please? Uh, OET out of its own wisdom has started showing the speaker even on the screen. So this question may be irrelevant, so I'm not asking actually. And thereby I'm pointing the person to please let people see me there also, if they have understood it in English. They refer to uh, Indian lunch and uh, the previous uh, people who spoke here, they refer to it as an Indian lunch. But uh, mind you, it was a Gujarati lunch. And it is uh, really heavier, heavier, heavier than Indian lunch. But the only exception here is uh, there is no audience. There are all gurus. And I bow down to all the gurus present here. Please clap for yourself. We have been clapping for many. Let us clap for all the gurus present here. Now again, that means something. When I say all the gurus are present here as a part of the audience, there is an underlying moral responsibility, responsibility not to sleep when this panel discussion is uh, happening because we are habituated of uh, getting students in the audience who generally go to sleep when we are teaching post noon session generally. So, uh, and anyways, there are videos, videographers who out of uh, their curiosity keep on showing you on this uh, center console. So uh, it is a very risky phenomena to go to sleep. So having uh, set the tone, let me now proceed with the panel discussion. We have three stalwarts. The details are all known to you. So I'm not uh, referring to the names, but the subject for this second panel discussion, and you already have a flair of the morning panel discussion. It was fantastic. Agar kisi ne roka nahi hota, abhi tak wohi panel discussion saayad chal raha hota. So let us start with another. Again, that is a subject near to uh, everybody's heart because uh, formal and vocational education is a subject matter of debate and discussion for uh, the education sector for a long. And we have three stalwarts here who are into either policy making or policy implementation or at various uh, stage of higher education where they can actually enlighten us, all of us, on uh, how we can reinvent formal education by embedding therein the vocational education. Independently, we are aware and we, uh, we have seen, I mean, we keep on listening to stories from our students uh, whereby they might have failed because of uh, lack of or inadequacy of vocational edu education properly blended with the formal education. Uh, and we have been working at MBA level uh, Ajay sir and Nitesh sir would agree that uh, the, the continuous efforts of the management institute are to, you know, embed in one or the other way. Even at the BCom level, madam is very active on, uh, you know, embedding the vocational education into the formal education that we generally provide. However, we, we need to uh, keep on visiting this particular subject at every reasonable interval because without vocational education, we all know that the formal education in isolation per se is always going to fail. So let me proceed with the uh, invitation to the uh, panelists. But before that, let me introduce them. And as Nitesh sir has also said, uh, don't go to sleep. Plus, please uh, put away your mobiles. They will not run away. Let me first introduce the uh, senior most panelist of our uh, panel, Dr. Margi Ben Hathi. Uh, sorry, Parikh. I'm sorry. Dr. Margi Ben Parikh is a professor of BK School of Professional Management Studies, Gujarat University, Ahmedabad. Additionally, she has also been serving different boards and committees in advisory positions. She has helped organizations prevent sexual harassment at workplace. She is a recognized PhD guide and she is a ment uh, mentor of the students of foreign origin. 
and a facilitator of cultural and sports activities. In 2016, she received a bachelor's degree in the arts with Sanskrit as her major. Her involvement in the research, teaching, and service teams of academic life are supported by close interaction with various business organizations oriented to making profit and extending service. Her research interest spans the field of organizational ambidexterity, general management, leadership, change management, and family business. Her publications have found a place in reputed international journals and case repositories, including IB and Harvard case databases. She has been invited to teach at reputed institutions, including IIM, Ahmedabad. She is on editorial boards of management journals and regularly reviews research papers by way of service. Her teaching has consistently been rated amongst the highest by the students across places wherever she has taught. So we have today with us as our first panelist to enlighten us on this uh, embedding of vocational edu education in the formal education, Dr. Uh, Margi Ben Parikh, who is uh, blessed with a, as a blessed to us with a, as a personality who is a scholar, researcher, thinker, author, speaker, influencer, and the management guru with an excellent blend of exposure in the corporate sector and education per se. I request her to uh, enlighten us for next 15 minutes on the subject interested to us. I must say that was quite an intimidating introduction to myself. <laughs> um, well, first of all, uh, I would like to start with the feeling of uh, gratitude uh, to the mentors, organizers, coordinators, facilitators, and volunteers of this organization. And thanks to my fellow panel members and the moderator uh, that I am a part of uh, this event uh, and that you know it has given me an opportunity to look back into something uh, that I read about uh, in quite distant past. Uh, the topic uh, says that, uh, you know, we, we are here to exchange ideas and explore possibilities um, in the field that connects uh, what is called formal vocational education. And I have a question, a uh, set of questions regarding the meaning of all these uh, terms themselves. But uh, in the beginning, I want to start with uh, recognition of a promise or a possibility that our new education policy has introduced. Um, you know, all of us uh, here being the educators, we have gone through the new education policy. And as any new policy document um, contains, it contains a lot of outlines, guidelines, and philosophical statements. Um, I would say that this is the education policy that has uh, our national identity at the core or at the heart of uh, policy making in the field of education. But uh, I want to remind uh, ourselves about you know, what is the meaning of the word policy. We, we, we use the word policy very spontaneously, but in itself, uh, any policy is just a guideline. It is a set of statements uh, that connect any organization's values to what it desires as good practices and what it thinks are the practice practices that should not be followed. So in a way, it is a bridge between our values and convictions on one hand and our procedures and practices and rules on the other. Um, then what is vocational? Um, you know, although I represent here on this dais the field of management, uh, I would say the world of management itself is so diverse that we cannot have one set of vocational education uh, for the management professionals. Um, in Gujarati, uh, I mean, I assume that all of us here are either of Gujarati origin or we have settled in Gujarat and we understand Gujarati. 
and therefore the word vocational education is closely connected with is bunyadi shikshan uh, bunyadi shikshan uh, you know is by definition something that is directed at a particular occupation and the skill set connected with that occupation uh, the historical background of the whole bunyadi shikshan uh, vichardhara is uh, starting from 1937 when gandhi bapu um, uh, articulated his thoughts about bunyadi shikshan and uh, its core philosophy um, in his publication harijan uh, which later i think called harijan bandhu uh, at that time its pillars were number 1 education up to standard 7 Uh, should be made available for all uh, education must be delivered in or must be obtained in mother tongue uh, the focus should be on productive industries uh, and skill development uh, should be through crafts in the center of the education so in the center of the education we don't have syllabus and passing of the exam but we have you know learning the skills um, affiliated with practice or work in selected industry at that time you know when gandhi ji wrote this uh, the industries he had in mind were weaving and agriculture um what happened later was you know gandhi ji is writing attracted a lot of attention and um, soon enough there was an educators conference um and the, at that conference educators brainstormed you know how we can get gandhi ji's philosophy into the curriculums uh, so eventually they adopted uh, a lot of ideas into teaching practices and that was done through an educators council i'm told um, uh, which designed the curriculum under the chairmanship of dr zakir hussain after some exploration and implementation in the initially selected states which were uttar pradesh madhya pradesh bihar assam and orissa uh, encouraged by those uh, experimentations uh, later on uh, it was realized uh, that you know at the core of this whole bunyadi shikshan movement uh, there needed to be a focus on education so okay selecting a core industry was one but we are not preparing a breed of workers like the britishers who wanted to prepare a breed of administrators we are not replacing that education with a breed of workers but we want the children who will be tomorrow's citizens and who will think for themselves and they will be skilled while you know they are of a very tender age and therefore you know we should be very cautious about the kind of industries we select for affiliation with our curriculums so what happened was uh, you know uh, some loopholes or some limitations were discussed discovered and in 1964 kothari commission was constituted for thorough review of bunyadi shikshan Uh, how it was evolving and what were the limitations and improvements that could be implemented anyway to cut the long story short uh what was realized was once again the medium of instruction must be uh you know in primary secondary and higher education must be one's mother tongue but other features that were realized are of you know great importance and we recognize them even today for example psychological foundation that the child's or the student's intelligence uh, his or her propensities special abilities natural strengths and attitudes they all should be developed through education only so now we are not you know outsourcing some responsibility to tuition classes and then giving away some responsibility to parents the education process and educators are taking full responsibility for psychological development of the child next was social responsibility where the children are recognized as tomorrow citizens and therefore in them the attitudes of collaboration and cohesion were to be developed 
again through education and affiliated processes. Uh, next was you know, industrial activity at the center. So uh, even today in Europe, uh, if you see some countries, uh, I believe, I, I'm forgetting the name of the port, but it is somewhere near Ant Antwerp. And if you see the entire port city has its own world. Uh, there is this port, which is the business hub, and the education, the universities that they have nearby are teaching all the courses related to supply chain or you know, transportation, economics, everything, the basic disciplines which are taught over there are related to the business of ports. If you see some of the clusters in Italy, again, you know, uh, the leather industry is pretty dominant over there. So everything that is taught in universities near some of those clusters is related to the leather uh, business. So industrial activity has to be at the center. Uh, trade skills, uh, so industry and trade go together hand in hand. And then finally, integration of subjects uh, to contribute to education focused on the industry. For example, if you are teaching or if you are focused on or oriented to port-related businesses, then what kind of economics, what kind of management, what kind of uh, soft skills will you teach to your children? They all should be you know, integrated. Um, so I tend to think that in the middle of all of this, uh, we have to recognize the importance of teachers' training. Today, what we see, at least in my world where I inhabit and work, uh, children fresh out of master's course straight away go for doctoral degree uh, and then uh, they are uh, absorbed in teaching capacity. They teach management without any first-hand experience of the organizations that require management. So essentially they are teaching exclusively out of textbooks. Uh, but if you want to go for Bunyadi Shikshan or vocational training or vocational curriculum or whatever you ca uh, call it, teacher's training has to be fundamentally rethought, redesigned. Uh, again, also the question is about original values. Mahatma Gandhi, when he talked about Bunyadi Shikshan, he wanted freedom for India and he wanted Indian society to be completely fair and just, irrespective of one's class, and he wanted people to be free in the thinking also, not just administratively or from governance point of view from the Britishers, but free in the mindset. So my question is, you know, in, in terms of today, uh, if we are rethinking uh, Bunyadi education, then what are the kind of values that we want to bring into the education? Uh, again, um, another question is what industries our Bunyadi education or vocational training is going to be focused on? Have we recognized India's core competencies? Have we done some kind of strategic analysis where we want to leverage India's uh, competitive position? That will tell us what skills and what values uh, we want to instill in our children through vocational uh, education. Uh, one chief challenge at this level, you know, I'm soon going to wrap up uh, my state, opening statement here. So before I wrap up, I want to say that uh, the biggest challenge we face is of diversity. Uh, Italy finds it easier to manage the industrial clusters. Uh, Euro many other European countries also find it easier uh, to manage their um, business or industry focused education because they are more homogeneous compared to Indian culture and Indian society. We have such a diverse range of geographic context, historical context and political cultural context that we just cannot have one common format or framework of vocational uh, education or vocational training. Um, even start with the principle of mother tongue. Uh, if we say that vocational education must be imparted through mother tongue, then we have to be prepared to teach, publish, and write in our own mother tongues are the teachers prepared in the first place. So my proposal is that we must start any of our thinking with diversity and decentralization 
in mind. And with this, I rest my case. Thank you for giving this time to me. Thank you, Margibin. That was really enlightening. Uh, we'll come back to you. I'll uh, now introduce another uh, stalwart who is also from the uh, literature background, Dr. Dilip Bhai Bharat. And before I uh, read his this very detailed biodata, because uh, unlike Margibin, who uh, just came before the commencement of the panel discussion, I had the privilege of meeting these two uh, gentlemen uh, since this early morning. And uh, about Bharat, sir, I have uh, come to know that is in spite of this lengthy and very enriching biodata, he is a very humble, down-to-earth, and a very mixing and friendly person. So now, uh, going on to his formal introduction, uh, Bharat, sir, is uh, presently teaching English literature and language to the postgraduate students of MK uh, Bhavnagar University. He has 24 years of experience of teaching to students belonging to various faculties like commerce, management, computer, humanities, and social sciences. His areas of interest are called innovative use of ICT in teaching English, literature, and library theories, uh, sorry, literary theories. He has conducted workshops on use of web tools for teaching in national and international conferences. He has penned books and articles on Thomas Hardy, Kamla Das, modern communication and web tools for English teaching. Recently, he has completed an e-content development project funded by Ministry of HRD, Government of India. The short video lectures developed under this project are uploaded on the YouTube. He has completed UGC research project on technology and teaching English language and literature, blended learning. He has successfully completed the online courses and I think there are hardly some countries left, sir. Uh, the courses are on digital humanities, EDX, MOOC from Harvard University, technology and ethics, the Ohio State University, understanding research methods, University of London, Greek and Roman mythology, University of Pennsylvania, assessment and teaching of 21st century skills, University of Melbourne, shaping the way we teach English, one and two paths to success in ELT, University of Oregon. So we have in uh, Dr. Dilip Bharat, sir, uh, here in this panel discussion an unparalleled wisdom in the field of teaching English to almost all streams of knowledge. I request uh, Dilip Bharat sir to uh, give his opening remarks on the subject. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, I have brought a few notes so I will keep on referring to some of the references related to uh, embedding uh, vocational education huh, into formal education. This topic or the framing of the topic is very interesting, huh, the way it is framed. So uh, it is not replacing uh, formal education or academic education with vocational education and that is a very good point. Uh, whoever thought behind the topic, uh, uh, congratulations to getting the right words uh, here. Even a national education policy of India or even worldwide when we look at OECD countries, uh, the first world countries and we try to refer to their uh, educational policies, uh, they also put stress on vocational education but uh, with a pinch of salt that uh, completely replacing uh, the formal education or academic education just for the sake of jobs perhaps may lead to some other problems also. So that also we'll try to see uh, in my uh, brief talk uh, here. So uh, embedding is the right word, reimagining uh, vocational education is the right word and we do not replace the formal education that is very significant part. Uh, what happens or what are the problems? The national education policy has very clearly chalked out all the problems also. Uh, once we go through those documents, point number 16, uh, it says about reimagining uh, vocational education. And uh, in like 66 pages of the draft uh, of uh, uh, this policy in English language, 75 times uh, vocational word is mentioned. So there is a very interesting importance uh, thought by 
government of india ministry of higher education and all the people who were working behind uh, drafting of the policy i know we all know that policies look good on paper when it comes really on the field and the practical implementations is the real game to be seen that how it is going to be unfolded and the 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 broad timeline that nep has given is up till 2040 so it's a long duration that is given today morning when we are looking at uh, this uh, uh, wuka or I, I was just remembering waka waka <laughs> song and when uh, rathor sir was singing i th i thought he will sing waka waka <laughs> song uh, but that in that volatile uh, disrupted environment the education system where it is very difficult to think what after five years everybody said that it is it is a time where we have to be agile on our toes uh, we have to be ready to change anytime in that to think something for 2040 seems to be uh, a very distant dream also no? or many things will change also many things will and we have to be ready for that change no? that is very necessary also so in this uh, 75 references in this uh, uh, booklet uh, the very first paragraph uh, it tries to say that uh, vocational education or vocational skills uh, among our students indian students in the age group of 19 to 24 is less than five percentage less than five percentage uh, and it is compared with uh, american data uh, which is around 50 percentage uh, and uh, uh, even the korean north korean data where is it is uh, around 96 percentage so uh, maybe a 96 percentage will be nearly impossible for us to reach uh, uh, reach because uh, korean countries are much smaller country as compared to the vastness of india we have around more than a dozen korea in india so reaching to that will be distant but nep targets 50 percent of uh, uh, vocational education to the uh, students who are in age group of 19 to 24 but they want to start it very early very early right from the sixth standard they are planning to start the thing so even in the, uh, the sixth seventh eighth standard at a very primary level in the school uh, they are proposing uh, some fun games related to vocational education uh, they also think of like 10 days uh, in a term which are bagless days without school bag and on those days students would do something which is connected with vocational training Carpent carpentry might be there some kind of repairs might be there as if like we think of making somebody uh, the master of uh, all the trades tradesmen which are required for home appliances and repairs of several such kind of things so that is uh, one of the dreams of nep eh? right from the school they wanted to incept some seeds some ideas in the minds through fun games and other thing later on when they reach to 11 12 standard and then to higher education there is a broader plan to see how it can be embedded uh, also so what it tries to see uh, uh, nep uh, uh, tries to look at this in nine uh, 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 points nine points are chalked out uh, uh, here uh, it says that first one uh, very first and very important one is overcoming social status hierarchy associated with vocational education overcoming social status hierarchy so uh, we all know that who who are the students uh, who opt for polytechnic courses after 10th standard we know those who are not good in academic education or we call it formal education those who are good will go for 11th standard either science they will take or commerce but those are all the parents who think that our kids are good for nothing <laughs> let them go for iti <laughs> let them go for uh, polytechnic courses so that social stigma uh, that is there with this vocational training should be destigmatized should be destigmatized that is the first thing that they wanted so you uh, uh, our nep and we also like as a society we need to think that uh, formal education which is very important there is no doubt about it but uh, it is perhaps a hierarchically given more value as compared to vocational training or vocational education that is the first point that it tries to look at second is uh, integrating vocational education with general education as we call it uh, formal education or academic education with focus on social inclusion gender equality and inclusive education also and all these words are also very important also so we are not just planning to make uh, through vocational education people who are who who can just repair things not only things but even the 
human uh, tendencies which are very significantly important. So gender equality, inclusive education and social inclusion also is thought. Third point, uh, introducing Lok Vidya. Hmm? Introducing Lok Vidya. Lok Vidya, it is translated as uh, indigenous knowledge and skills in schools through vocational education. So, uh, as India is a very diverse country, we have lots of uh, local skills or requirement of local skills at different places. Those can be identified by schools or colleges, universities and uh, a special vocational uh, introduction in school and then training in the universities can be provided for Lok Vidya. Uh, next is uh, facilitating horizontal mobility of vocational students in schools also. So, uh, uh, we have some rules, for example, a student who has done polytechnic may get a direct entry into third semester eh, of uh, general education or engineering degree. Uh, here they are thinking about even school level also, how it can be channelized. Then uh, next one is integrating new age skills, 21st century skills and entrepreneurship education in schools, so right from the school days. Now here there is, there is a problem, there is this catch-22 kind of a situation that we can see here. Uh, we, when we think of schools, normally technology or ICT is uh, still not allowed at that level. We think of uh, introducing technology after higher education or maybe in higher education itself only from college is another thing. But now maybe because of the changing time, the need of uh, IoT, Internet of Things, the robotics, artificial intelligence, Maybe because of that, maybe there are heavy pressures on policy makers also to introduce technology as early as possible to the students. Maybe because of that, we have put that in schools, we want IoT, uh, internet and all those things uh, uh, also. As we have said, the disruptive time and sometimes it becomes very difficult to make a very wise choice. Uh, it is very difficult. Sometimes we learn only from uh, the mistakes that may, we may be committing in doing several things. Uh, next one was promoting online and open vocational education. So we need to promote a lot. Uh, again, there is this catch-22 situation here that vocational training can best be imparted when there is hands-on experiments or hands-on work. We need to do work. Skills are all about doing. But at the same time, there might be some skills which can be identified, which can be dealt in online mode or in remote mode also. Uh, the list of the MOOCs which were presented here, which I, I, I uh, just out of passion of seeing that how, what is MOOC and how it operates in last decade when it was much in demand, uh, I, I went on doing whatever MOOC came across my path from University of Oregon, Pennsylvania, University of London, uh, and uh, Australia, uh, and it was really helpful uh, as a teacher, uh, as a content creator, uh, as somebody who tries to understand education systems of the world, it was very helpful uh, uh, as, a, as a policy maker or anything that we want to think of, uh, it was very helpful. So online helps, but maybe so far as theoretical things are concerned, uh, if there are practical things, then uh, hands on things will be necessary for vocational education. Next point which is mentioned there is uh, developing and implementing a holistic assessment and evaluation system. Holistic uh, assessment and evaluation system wherein it tries to say that we need to check the aptitudes of our students, whether they are aptitude towards particular skills or towards a more of a formal kind of an education. Then fostering vertical mobility of vocational students and uh, finally ensuring professional training for preparation of quality vocational teachers. A very important, though ninth, yeah, it is mentioned as the last one, but it is very, very important also, training to teachers, orienting all the teachers who are in formal education or who are in uh, this academic education, so that whenever they talk about uh, vocational training and education, they do not try to make hierarchies that this is better and that is inferior. So that way also teachers training becomes very important there. Uh, as my, my topic, the, uh, our uh, 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 coordinator, huh, sir, has given that I have to speak something about tomorrow also, like what you think of. Obviously, NEP is talking about tomorrow 
only. But in that also, we can say that what can be the challenges eh, which we face when we try to look at embedding vocational thing. The very first challenge might be about infrastructure. So, do we think of building a new infrastructure for vocational classrooms and other things? Uh, the best idea is always to collaborate with the existing things and existing institutes, nearby industry, uh, nearby setup of any of those things that is better than building up a separate uh, setup or infrastructure for vocational things. So that is the solution also we can think of. Another is the training of the teacher which is very very important. We need to recruit the teachers also and trainers also for uh, 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 this uh, aspect which will be a mammoth task and a very challenging task uh, uh, also. Uh, third one, formal recognition uh, without any kind of stigma. That is one of the uh, tremendous challenges that we see. So how it can be embedded uh, with uh, existing uh, structures that we need to see. Uh, I was a dean of the faculty of arts also. So by that way, I was able to see how arts faculty, all the subjects wherein we have Shastra, uh, social sciences and languages. So normally in Gujarat or if you see India also, we find that four language departments are found everywhere in arts faculty. And then we have this uh, social sciences like psychology, sociology, history, philosophy, political science, economics, uh, that are also the arts subject which are there. Any of the arts syllabus we pick up, the arts syllabus was always in that way very advanced. That is, at least on paper, it was quite advanced. What we are thinking of NEP and a cafeteria model or variety of choices we think of giving, that was already existing with our arts colleges and syllabus. The problem was there were no teachers, so the choices were limited always. So students never realized that we had so many choices of selecting languages or I can do economics or political science or philosophy also or along with that I can study literature and other things also. All things were available already. Only problem was there were no teachers, there was no infrastructure, so all colleges decided if you want to study here, you have to take this language with this Shastra or this language with this uh, another language. So that was like compulsorily Im imposed. That challenge will be there that now how will we operate uh, uh, these choices uh, uh, which is to be given. Uh, Ten years back we implemented choice based credit system and we know by and large that uh, we, don't, we are not very proud of the success story after 10 years of choice based credit uh, uh, systems. Uh, so that is uh, the, uh, the important part that when we try to embed and how that arts model can help us in looking at those things uh, uh, also. Uh, I came across a very interesting paper in last two minutes I will uh, uh, speak about this. I was also trying to Google or to search not only the benefits of vocational education but I tried to search what are the disadvantages of vocational education. I thought that let me see somewhere somebody has research, written a research paper on disadvantages of this or not and I found one uh, paper published uh, uh, from University, Italy's University, it is uh, uh, Padova University, eh? from there this paper is published and it says that as such there is no effect of vocational education so far as salaries of the people are concerned or job opportunities are concerned. It is almost equal with formal education there. And it said that when they are in those countries, they studied around 15 OECD countries first world countries and that data was given, where there is a lack of uh, as, as a vocational skill, there are more chances of jobs and other things. As soon as you give more training in vocational, job chances decreases or even the salaries also decrease also. We need to keep this also in mind that when we are moving in this direction, perhaps when people will be out, there will be so many people out there that again job crisis or salary uh, uh, may, might be a problem in that capacity. Also, uh, uh, thank you everybody. Thank you. thank you, sir. That was quite uh, informative. Uh, we have a third stalwart in this panel uh, in the form of Dr. Mahesh and Jivani. Uh, he comes from science faculty. He is presently teaching electronic uh, science to the postgraduate students of the Saurashtra University, Rajkot, Gujarat. He has more than 20 years of experience of teaching science. His areas of interest are IoT, mobile application development, innovative use of ICT, e-content development, and digital 
signal processing. He has conducted workshops on use of web tools for teaching in national and international conferences. He has penned books, papers, and articles as part of his research work. During the lockdown, he trained large number of teachers across the country on area of e-content development. He is technical coordinator, content reviewer for three NRC uh, national resource centers for Swayam courses. So in uh, Mahesh sir, in uh, addition to what is written here and out of my intense interaction since this morning, what I have come to know about him is his sense of humor is at peak any time. I think it is 24 by 7. And he has got a, uh, the, the factual information that somebody else cracked is he has got a studio at his home. I don't know what he's doing with the studio. Maybe he will let us know. I invite uh, uh, sir to please enlighten us. Thank you very much for nice and lucid words. Thank you, Neemanu. Garni uh, because I am from the Sauras University, this institution is affiliated to Sauras University, so just I am feeling I am just like at home. Uh, always it is difficult after lunch. But uh, <clears throat> this is, can you please, um, because whatever the things on in NEP document, uh, only three pages are there for vocational education and all the three pages are covered by these two uh, <laughs> experts. Now what I have to speak. <laughs> but let's see. This is the last Magaj Masti. <laughs> last one. <laughs> no, not to worry. I am the last one. Right? So this is a last Magaj Masti. Let's... Uh, I have okay. In uh, Dilip sir is from the language, so we are always a uh, problem now because of the artificial intelligence. Uh, Google is uh, picking up right pronunciation, whatever in whatever way we are speaking, uh, Google will uh, picking up. Uh, if you are speaking, uh, if you are at from the Saurashtra, then you say uh, Pani, but if you are in the uh, Mesana, then Pony. Uh, so every hundred kilometer, every hundred kilometer pronunciation is changed. So, and sometimes what happens uh, when we are talking, our tone is very important. Rather than what we want to say, uh, and Saurashtra ma to evu kiya chhe, ena mari sa me khar khai ne joyu. I don't know, I mean, 50 saurash thai gya, evu keva hi nahi, pan toh hi kai dao chhu. Khabar nadhi paidi kya khar et le su. Ela un kok man na kiya ke khar khai ne joyu, to ko bhai tu mithu khai le. Right? So, uh, we are always connected with the tone. So, again, learn. Learn, re. Learn, re. And if you rephrase this. Then it is relearn. It's all about relearning. This entire exercise from morning to up to this point is about Relearn. If you remember the Hero Honda advertisement, those who are sitting at the last, sometimes what beautiful advertisement is there. Fill it, shut it, forget it. Fill it, shut it, forget it. But that only for that particular time. That is only for that particular time. Again, you have to refuel it. Again, you have to refuel it. So now this is a time that we, everyone connected in the education, they have to refuel it. Uh, that's why it is relearn. Re and now as this topic says, a uh, vocational education, vocational education with the formal education. So it's all about vitamin M ultimately. Itle daiya, amme aiba e pila to badai nu sanman gairu. In a vagar to kai thai nai na? Kya kya vachya gujarati boli so? Samjai to saru no, samjai to vadare saru. In training I am always using this word. If you understand, fine. If you, know, if you are not, fantastic. Because trainings are mean for that. But here it is not a training. So, relearn, basically it is for the 
ultimately everything is for the a challenge hai a technology ma problem hai ha earning is most important aspect saru banis to sara paisa mercy bas aaj this is a bottom line this is a bottom line okay now we have two things basically there are three part ત્યાં થી એન્ટર કરો ને હા જમી લીધું છે એટલે વાંધો નહીં ઇટ્સ અ ગ્રીન એપલ ફોર્મલ એજ્યુકેશન હા મજા આવે સરસ વી ઓલ આર ઇન ધ ફ્લો ઓફ ફોર્મલ એજ્યુકેશન જરીક સારું જોતું હોય હાઈ ક્લાસ ગોતવું પડે એવું હોય ટોપિક છે ઇઝ વી હેવ ટુ इंटीग्रेट हम बराबर इंटीग्रेट न थे इट क्रिएट्स अ प्रॉब्लम बट इफ इट इज परफेक्टली डन सो दिस बेसिकली वी हेव टू डू इट इज अ इंटीग्रेशन इट इज अ इंटीग्रेशन एंड देर आर सर्टन सो मेनी वेज that uh, one can do in india other countries i don't know much about a loko to bodh bade phare chhe and course kare chhe mane eu kai hu to nano manas chu etle apde to jetlu google dekhade etlu joiye but in india uh, there is a classical structure is there to integrate all these things after 2013 and sukame how uh, why we are why we want to do this is a basic problem this is as dilip sir also mentioned this is a basic problem white collar job blue collar job pink collar job uh, uh, social stigma right uh, uh, so he mentioned a word a social stigma bahu hoshiyar na hoy e science liye bahu hoshiyar hoy to medical ma jai engineering ma pan na male to bsc karva jai બહુ હોશિયાર હોય તો જ એન્જિનિયરિંગમાં જાય અને મારા જેવો માણસ બીએસસી કરી અને પાંચ હજાર એન્જિનિયરને ટ્રેન કરે પ્રોફેસર થઈને હા આર્ટ્સ વાળા ક્યાં જાય તો એ બેસ્ટ એક્ઝામ્પલ ઓવર હિયર વી હેવ અ દિલીપ બારડ એ મેડિકલ વાળાને ટ્રેન કરે એન્જિનિયરિંગ વાળાને ઇંગ્લિશ શીખાડે ઇંગ્રેજી ઇઝ રિયલી ઇંગ્રેજી બોલો ને ઇન્ડિયામાં એટલા જબરજસ્ત એન્ડ અ પીપલ ધોઝ હુ આર ઇન અ રૂલિંગ આસ્પેક્ટ ગાંધીનગરમાં અમારે એવું કહેવાય કે જેને સારું ઇંગ્લિશ આવે ને જેની બદલી થવાની હોય ને ઇંગ્લિશ વાળાની બદલી ન થાય સ્પીચ લખી દઈએ સો so these are the things that maru badak shuruaat ahi thi thai charity begins from home sarkar badla hose sarkar policy document aape che madam e saras explain pan karu fantastic dilip sir e pan saras maja nu fantastically describe karu ke entire policy document but charity begins from home this is all about perception this is all about perception vocational education a frame ma ave che આપણે વોકેશનલ એજ્યુકેશનને એક ઉતરતી કક્ષામાં જોઈએ છીએ બરાબર છે અને કાંઈ ના કર્યું તો આઈ આઈ આઈટીઆઈ કરો ટર્નર ફિટર પણ આપણા ઘરે એ જ લોકો આવીને કામ કરે છે આપણે નથી કરી શકતા આપણે એક સાદો નળ પણ ફિટ કરી શકતા નથી કારણ કે આપણે અહીંયા ડેઈલી વેજીસ બહુ ઓછા છે હવે નાવ નાવ ધીસ ઇઝ અ મોસ્ટ ઇમ્પોર્ટન્ટ આસ્પેક્ટ સોશિયલ કન્સેપ્શનમાં આપણે જોઈએ એની બડી હેવ આઈડિયા અબાઉટ દેટ વી હેવ એન્ટાયર બોડી વિચ ઇઝ નોન એઝ એન ઓ એસ ગૂગલ ચાલુ છે ને આમાં જેનું કોઈ નથી એનું ગૂગલ છે હં ગુગલેશ્વર મહાદેવ કેન યુ જો કેટલો આ પૂરું થઈ ગયું બસ આટલું જ હતું પીપીટી તો બહુ પીપીટી ન કરાય 
Can you can you uh, switch over to the Google? Okay, there is one uh, website or uh, institutions or framework which is known as NOS, National Occupational Standard. Jitli bhi job che, ena standards che. Anybody have idea about it? Those who are from the, say for example, from the industry, they know this. If you are going for the job, every job have profile, which is known as the job profile, which is known as the job profile. And job profile are classified in five terms. Your personal skills, your professional skills, your relationships, and your domain. Now, how we connect this uh, formal education and vocational education, say for example, I am very good at uh, making uh, some fruit juice. These are my skills, right? And many of we don't know that tomato comes under the category of fruit. Tomato comes under the category of fruits. I am very good at, say for example, I am making fruit salad. And tomato is a fruit comes under the category of formal education, where we are teaching that tomato comes under the category of fruit, right? But uh, so I have a skill that I am making a good fruit salad. In formal education, if wisdom is given to the particular person that you are making fruit salad, don't use tomato, right? Perfect? So here we have to integrate these two. This is a small example for the understanding. Okay, can, can, kindly write NOS. NOS. Who bolis to koi manse nahi? Google kaise na to manse? Begu begu lakso to ilahi le se AI che. No, no, we full meaning, not just the only NOS. Look, on it. It's a mega idea. NOS. Enter. Niche. At why you look for NOS in India? Ah, National Skill Development Corporation. We have a separate corporation which is known as the National Skill Development Corporation. Ah, NSDC India. Fine. National Skill Development Corporation, right? Each and every skill is defined over here. Each and every skill is defined over here. Pujara sir, beta chay, Tolani College mathi aave chay, Tolani College is offering uh, vocational course, right? I think, in banking sector. Okay, so there is also possible in our Rajkot, we have a Sunshine School, uh, Sunshine Group of Institutions, they are also offering BVOC course. Bachelor in Vocational in Banking Services and Finance. So these are a parallel system. These are the parallel systems. There are so many vocational courses are available and one institute can get grants. How much you know? 1 crore 85 lakhs. 1 crore 85 lakhs uh, for running vocational courses. So this is a one parallel Chai beginning. Fine. Now, as Dilip sir mentioned, that uh, how to integrate this parallel system of vocational course with the formal education. Okay. So there is a provision. There is a provision. Bus. Huh? So there is a provision um, uh, that uh, you can uh, write NIE, NIE, LIT, NIE, LIT, dot GOV dot in. Here one can get accreditation now here is a real pinch uh, of this topic that how one can integrate the 
vocational course which our institution is offering and they can get accredited by somebody so they the workforce we are producing they are industry standard they are industry standard so this body this body is offering accreditation to our course which we are running in the higher educations so they have entire framework they have entire framework and in that framework whatever the courses we are running in the formal educations that all formal education courses can be accredited with few modifications through this so when a person go into the job sector every job profile is divided into 10 skills in industry zero skill a starting level one and up to skill number 10 sometimes what happen and one scheme is also there which is known as the apprentice that is also known as the apprentice sometimes what happened industry people hiring our students and they are paying less આપણે તો હજી એવું કરી છે ને કે નોકરી મળે એટલે બાળક ને તો ખુશ થઈ જાય કે આ નોકરી મળી ગઈ જે પૈસા આપો એ મને નોકરી મળી ગઈ એટલો બધો રસ છે બટ ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રી હાવ દેર સર્ટન સ્ટાન્ડર્ડ ઓફ જોબ પ્રોફાઇલ દે આર કેટેગરાઇઝ ઇન ફ્રોમ લેવલ વન ટુ લેવલ ટેન સો ધીસ ફ્રેમવર્ક વિચ ઇઝ નોન એઝ નેશનલ સ્કીલ ક્વોલિટી ફ્રેમવર્ક which is introduced in 2013 national skill quality framework so whatever the courses we are offering that must be aligned with nsqf that must be aligned with nsqf so whatever the force hr we are producing in the market they are industry standard they are industry standard say for example after completing bcom a student don't know how to write a check okay so when they are in go into the market actually bcom pai kaira pachi to en khabar en khabar ad nahi ke man nokri male ke no male but bcom is not come under the any industry standard job sector ni andar bcom apu evu kasu che j nahi so how to do that so one has to go through nsqf framework so whatever the courses we are offering we also have to put in under the nsqf framework so in nsqf framework that a students who are coming out from the colleges or institutions they have a industry skills this is known as basically known as technical word is gap analysis this is known as a gap analysis industry also don't know the person who are going there uh, which kind of qualifications which kind of work or skill a person knows and even a candidate himself or herself don't know what are my skills what are my skills so these are the framework they are providing and government is already introduced a national vocational education board national vocational educational board and this will going to work from standard as dilip sir mentions standard 6th onward okay and under lok vidya there is a scheme uh, a teacher will be trained teacher will be trained for this particular training vocational training so this framework is there documentation is there framework is there documentation is there only the thing is we don't know only the thing is we don't know and as far as the vocational education concern it is running from since 2013 nsqf is running 2013 jenu koi nahi google che whenever you have got the time go to the youtube or uh, google uh, in on youtube there are plenty of videos are available there are plenty of videos are available and this is a chapter number 16 of nep policy tame kasu na karo ne kindly read out the 66 pages the 66 pages are comprises in four section a four section 
the first section which have eight chapters for the school education then 11 chapters for the higher educations then five chapters for other key areas so chapter number six comes under the category of higher education which is for the vocational education then after section number three which is known as the other keys area five chapters are there a two special chapter is given for the technology as Dilip sir rightly uh, note down that uh, 76 times or 75 times vocational word is used but if you refer the NEP uh, document 66 page everywhere you will find technology word so entire policy is revolving around the technology and section number four three chapters are given but then I'm then the document saras chabadu saras how to implement so special three chapter is given how to implement this journey is recently started and is 2040 and is 2040 at seminars training and then uh, one can get idea uh, what kind of fruits we will get what kind of output we will get uh, last ek vastu kai do pure gujarati ma j ke is to samjha sa a badu yehu chhe ke tame koi ne name plate fit karta joya chhe kya aapne kari ji yehu to nahi kao pan kya joya ishe scooter ni plate fit karta joya ishe name plate fit karta ishe chare chare screw kya rai ni maare one by one mars it a prakriya check education is a continuous process we, it's not we can't take a stock of it we can't take a stock of it it's a continuous process and the may they may screw tight career here so what are a tight career in the frame to teach i remember along with that and a balloon it's a time a local two teachers so, so thank you very much Having received uh, this primary remarks from all the three uh, stalwart panelists, let me uh, now ask some leading questions to all of them. And thereafter, we can uh, keep the floor open for questions from all of us. Uh, starting with uh, Dr. Margiman, uh, Madam, given that this formal education has inherently excluded the uh, vocational education significant amount thereof and this is known to the public at large it is in the public domain also so according to you what are the real reasons which is blocking this merger Well, uh, sir, I don't think that awareness is not the same as the We think that there is a lot of awareness because we are all educators. We have read the policy. We have actually, many of us have suge made suggestions while policy was uh, uh, being made. The government has invited suggestions. We have made a lot vocational orientation na hova na problems pan nade chhe for example sare humna ch kidu ke commerce no student hoy ne check lagta na avartu hoy aaje ek chartered accountant e mane kidu ke interview le to to ane mcom ni pass thayeli ek student candidate interview apva mate aavi ene bank reconciliation statement etle shu e j nathi khabar etle commerce ma jene masters degree lidi hoy a vocational to chodo a theoretical pan ke vidi te pass kari gai e apne khabar na thi etle khare khar vocational education etle shu e apne jani eche pan apne teachers pan etla aware na thi ke apne jane pass kari eche e vidyar thi kale koi profession ma joda vano che e profession ni patar nahi khandi na khaya chokri etle apne अवेयर छिए के नथी ये नकी शना थी था ऐसे के आपने कई क्वालिटी नो एजुकेशन आप ये छिए अने केवा स्टूडेंट ने आगर जवाब दिए छे अने केवा स्टूडेंट ने एम कहिए छे के वेट यू स्टिल नीड 
more inputs and you still need to demonstrate more tyar pachi j ame jawab agal jawab deshu evi jawabdari apne laiye to j apna ma awareness che em kevay baki parents ne ke even students ne pan nathi khabar because mari school che for example ema students aave che ne ke che ke tamare tya placement keva male che and i say ke wait pehla admission to le અને એડમિશન લઈને પાસ તો થા સેમેસ્ટરમાં અને નોકરી મળે એને લાયક તો થા પછી પૂછ કે કેટલાની નોકરી મળે છે સો સ્ટુડન્ટ્સ આર એટ્રેક્ટેડ ટુ એ પર્ટિક્યુલર પ્લેસ ઓર કોર્સ બિકોઝ દે હેવ હર્ડ ફ્રોમ સમવેર કે આ જગ્યાએથી બહુ સારી નોકરી મળે છે પેરેન્ટ્સ મને ઘણી બધી વાર પૂછે કે ફલાણી જગ્યાએ એડમિશન લેવડાવીએ કે ઢીકણી જગ્યાએ લઈ આવીએ હવે ઈફ આઈ સે કે ઓકે તમે જે આ બે જગ્યા કહો છો એમાંથી આ વધારે સારી છે તો દેન છે કે મારો દીકરો કે દીકરી તો એમ કે છે કે એના ફ્રેન્ડ્સ બધા અહીંયા જાય છે એટલે એને ત્યાં જવું છે સો એ જીદ લઈને બેઠો છે કે બેઠી છે એટલે મારે એને ત્યાં તો મને શું કામ પૂછો છો એટલે અવેરનેસના નામે આપણે બધા બહુ જાત જાતના કન્ફ્યુઝનમાં ગૂંચવાયેલા હોઈએ છે એટલે મેં તમારા સવાલનો જવાબ આપ્યો કે ના આપ્યો માય ક્વેશ્ચન ઇઝ વોટ ઇઝ બ્લોકિંગ ધ મર્જર મે બી ઇટ ઇઝ એટલે કેમ હા ઓકે તો કેમ નથી આવતું આ વોકેશન કારણ કે આર વી રિયલી ઓપન ટુ બિલ્ડિંગ સ્કિલ્સ રિલેટેડ ટુ એ વોકેશન ફોર એક્ઝામ્પલ એમબીએ થઈને કોઈને આઈટી ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીમાં જવું છે કે કોઈને ટેક્સટાઈલ ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીમાં જવું બધા એમબીએ એક સરખા નથી હોતા એટલે ટેક્સટાઈલ્સમાં એટલે અમારે ત્યાંથી પાસ થઈને આશીમામાં જશે કે અદાણીમાં જશે કે આઈસીઆઈસીઆઈમાં જશે એ દે ઓલ ડિમાન્ડ વેરી ડિફરન્ટ સ્કિલ સેટ્સ એટલે એનું ઇન્ટિગ્રેશન કેવી રીતે કરી શકાય એ સ્ટુડન્ટમાં રાઇટ ફ્રોમ સેમેસ્ટર વન ફોકસ હોય કે મારે એટલે આજકાલ ઘણા ઇન્સ્ટિટ્યૂશનમાં ક્લબ્સ ચાલુ કરે છે ફાઇનાન્સ ક્લબ હોય પછી માર્કેટિંગ ક્લબ હોય અને પછી વિદ ઇન ધ ક્લબ દે એક્સપ્લોર કે આ આપણી ક્લબને લગતા કયા કયા ઇન્ટરેસ્ટ આપણને પડે એવા ઓર્ગેનાઇઝેશન્સ છે એની સાથે લોકો લાઈઝો ચાલુ કરે આવે જાય ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રી વિઝિટ કરે એમ કરતાં કરતાં ઇન્ટરેક્શનમાંથી ખબર પડે કે વેન આઈ ગોટ એડમિશન મારે બેન્કિંગમાં જવું હતું પણ હવે બેન્કિંગ તો બહુ બોરિંગ લાગે છે એટલે હવે મારે પોર્ટમાં જવું છે કે બીજું કંઈક કરવું છે એટલે એ એથિક્સનો જેમ કે કોર્સ છે થોડા વર આજે જેમ વોકેશનનું ચાલે છે એમ એક દાયકા કે બે દાયકા પહેલાં એથિક્સનું ચાલતું હતું કે ભાઈ એમબીએ વાળા બધા જ હરામખોર હોય છે ને બધા પૈસાના બહુ જ ગોટાળા કરે છે અને એ લોકોને એથિક્સ આપણે શીખવાડવું જોઈએ એટલે એથિક્સ શુડ બી એકચ્યુઅલી એટ ધ સેન્ટર ઓફ વોટ એવર એ મેનેજર ઓર લીડર ડઝ પણ એને બદલે આપણે મિયરલી એમબીએ કરિક્યુલમમાં એને ઇન્ટીગ્રેટ કર્યો દેટ મીન્સ ઇટ ઇઝ જસ્ટ અ સિંગલ સિલેબસ વિચ ઇઝ હાફ ક્રેડિટ ઓર ટુ ક્રેડિટ અને એને પાસ થવામાં કોઈને જરાય કશું તકલીફ નથી પડતી અને તે છતાં કેટલા એમબીએ લોકોની એથિકલ બિહેવિયર સડનલી વધારે સારી બની ગઈ એટલે ઇન્ટીગ્રેશન હેઝ ઓલવેઝ બીન અ પ્રોબ્લેમ એન્ડ ઇટ વિલ બી અ પ્રોબ્લેમ એ કેવી રીતે ઇન્ટીગ્રેશન થાય અને આપણી આ ટાઇટલમાં પણ છે વૂકા વર્લ્ડ કીધું છે એ વોલેટાઇલ પણ છે અનસર્ટન પણ છે એટલે એ ટાઈપનું જે અનપ્રિડિક્ટેબલ વર્લ્ડ છે એમાં ઇન્ટીગ્રેશન થાય ને એમનું એમ જ રહે એવું નથી વી હેવ ટુ યુ નો ટાઈમ એન્ડ અગેન ચેન્જ ઇટ એઝ ધ કોન્ટેક્સ ડિમાન્ડ્સ so that merger is uh, difficult as per uh, margi mem now let me ask uh, a follow up question to uh, barat sir sir what are the most essential applied vocational skills that an institution must impart irrespective of the stream of knowledge the students choose if you can uh, highlight some very common Uh, irrespective of the stream of domain, I mean art, science, ne, commerce, ne, side ma muki dehi hai. To, evi kai, uh, some list of skills that he must possess, if you can highlight some. Yeah, I deliberately have not included earlier huh, this topic, but it's very interesting. Like, 
uh, here also, like this college, and there are a variety of disciplines going on, many faculties. Uh, and how one can think of? There is but obvious that ICT, technology, computer science related things are must for everybody. There is, it is an undeniable fact. We live in a digital society, we live in a digital culture. This is going to be the digital era. So there is no escape from uh, imbibing digital skills or digital skillings among the students, irrespective of whether they are arts, commerce, science, computers, or whatever they are. So that is must for everybody. Uh, when we talk of artificial intelligence, uh, it is necessary for each and every student, even for the arts or languages, that they should know how AI operates. Uh, how AI, in case sometime they have to use AI somewhere, they know the functioning of AI. Uh, that is why in that way, if they are not making or doing the things there. Second important thing which people worldwide, like in a, in a first world countries, normally people talk about this and that is uh, coding, code.org, Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and Salman Khan of Khan Academy, they, they are talking a lot about uh, coding. They say that coding is going to be the next mathematics. The way mathematical or numeracy skills were very important, nowadays it will be about coding. So each and every student, irrespective of their discipline, should be learning how to code. And coding, actually, they say it helps in how to think or how machines think, or how AI think, or how computers, the so computer language, programming languages is must for everybody. So that is another one. Uh, blockchain and cloud computing are the topics which perhaps can be specific for computer people rather than everybody. Huh, there. Uh, but apart from this, uh, when, when we look at uh, this uh, like corona pandemic, we are just coming out from corona pandemic, and during those lockdown days or the moments of crisis, if uh, people say that it will keep on coming now in this century, maybe after 100 years when people will look back, as we look back at 20th century and say that that was the century of world wars, there were two world wars and billions died, maybe this will be recorded as a century of pandemics. Then. In that ca uh, capacity, uh, two things will be very important. Uh, uh, one will be uh, food and fitness, food and fitness. Those who will be fit will be able to survive. So those who will be able to have immunity to fight with various viruses, they will survive. So how one can think of a vocational training or vocational courses in terms of food processing and fitness uh, idea. And second one is caretakers will be required a lot. Huh? Caretakers. We will replace everybody with robots, but perhaps caretakers will not be replaced by robots. So caretaking uh, will be something that we can think of. Finally, if uh, I have to like suggest like what can be given tomorrow to our students, what we can tell all our students right from tomorrow to do uh, 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 in, in terms of vocational training, then uh, I would suggest that ask all your students, uh, all your students to write a lot. Let them be writers. Whatever they learn in the class, let them reflect on it and let them write. And that writing is not only on pen and paper. Let them be digital writers. Let them write blogs, and not only like writing and forgetting, but let them publish the blogs, let them share the blog. So writing, reflective thinking, publishing, sharing, very important. If you find that your students are a good writer, then take them at a next level of, ask them to make YouTube videos or any kind of videos. Publish the videos, share the videos. These skills will be very, very important for uh, everybody uh, in, in, in coming days there. To be able to write and then to be able to make a video and then to be able to publish this work, you need to read. Samjhe ne. And I don't know, I'm fantastic. Saib, have you any question? No, you are a question. Yes, you Sir, in your opinion, uh, what is the kind of uh, blocks in the educational institutions and what is the mind resettling or setting required at the institutional level to surpass 
this limitation of providing vocational uh, trainings or vocational education within the available infrastructure. We don't want to change the infrastructure, but we want to embed, as per the today's headline topic, the vocational education into the whatever theoretical education we are providing. So what is the mind setting or resetting required? Say ma bolu, Gujarati ma ke English ma. Aray sahib, no problem. Okay, the pehli was to mind blocking chai, that is only for the, our perception. That we have to change. That uh, still, sir, I give them social stigma, vocational, like ITI, whatever, kare. And my base, sir, 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 पहली वस्तु बहु अजीब ही आपने बोली है चीना कि हमें भना भी है चीये हमें भनी है चीये हमें भनवा जाई है चीये outdated चे now there is one thing we have to inadequate our thing that हमें लोगों समझी है चीये समझा भी है चीये so this is a most important thing and like vocational education age चे that what you are offering as a formal education that you have to put into the practice uh, whatever the credit framework we have now, uh, NEP also offering a credit framework. That means, one institute mathi ek course kare lo ase, to bichi institute mathi mari credit jama tha sir. Okay, so one institute offer nathi karti, so you can go to the other institute. Alla institute apan eu raaku maro student tamare tya ke maave. So this is kind of a pooling. In India, uh, skilled HR is very important. Teachers are very important. So, we create a pool. Create karwani chhe. Ave, say, for example, a common example is that Madam is not a bank. Ni khabar na thi. Master's degree is students. We have a BCOM and an account nu, check. We have a account and a bearer. We have a check. We have a check. We have a check. If you switch over to the uh, <coughs> mindset of vocational training, any structure is perfect. So, what is the structure of the structure? The structure is a skill. And the structure of the skill is an industry accredited. The level 4 no, uh, skill is an artla, a job, a job, a job, a job. Standard fix is 1 to 10. So, a banking no manas, that you have a course offer, karo cho, BCOM, no ke, o, MCOM, no ke, science, no koi course, so, this e degree MCOM, BCOM, is not a list. If you want to do it, this is the same as you have set in your NSQF na structure, ma set chhe, along with the BCOM, a students who are in the same way, who are in the same way, who are in certificate, hoi, आज इन्हें एक अच्छा कोर्स कह रहे हो चाहे पर अलोंग विथ द बीकॉम इन्हीं पासे एनएसक्यूएफ ना क्रेडिट स्ट्रक्चर वाला थोड़ा ना बीजा सर्टिफिकेट है से जे इंडस्ट्री नो जे स्किल सेट छे स्टैंडर्ड वन टू टेन नो एमआई फिट था तो ऐसे क्या चार लेवल है तन लेवल है बी लेवल है एंड वंस ही और सी ग a formal education standard is different. In between, NSQF framework is there. So every institution has to accredit it. NSQF in their uh, courses. Problem is solved. Simple is that. But we don't know. And there is a provision. There is a provision. Anybody can search into the Google. We are we are also in the uh, we are in a process of this in the next uh, curricula, uh, provision is there, a procedure is there. Uh, if you go to the Google, uh, all the documents are available, how to apply, how to do, how to get accredited for your course. That is also given. I will a blind spot. Uh, true definition of information is a picture near the Saras no dialogue. Hero, Jatoi, Thamla, Bhatkai. So, what is Thamla? 
તો કે આ તો હતો તો ન અત્યારે ખબર પડી તો જાપાન તો હતું આપણને પહેલી વાર ખબર પડે કે જાપાન છે એનો મતલબ એમ નહીં કે જાપાન અત્યારે હતું જાપાન પહેલેથી છે આપણને આજે ખબર પડી થેન્ક યુ સર દેટ વોઝ એનલાઇટનિંગ નાઉ લુકિંગ ટુ ધ ટાઈમ કન્સન્ટ આઈ થિંક લેટ અ સ્વીચ ઓવર ટુ ધ ઓપન હાઉસ એન્ડ ઇન્વાઇટ ક્વેશ્ચન્સ ફ્રોમ ધી ગુરુઝ પ્રેઝન્ટ હિયર એન્ડ દેર આર સો મેની હેન્ડ્સ આઈ કેન સી if a person with mic can go to the person who wants to ask the question puch jo nahi to basir badra saras poet che ane saras maja ni vat kidi che me chup raha to galat fehmiya badi me chup raha to galat fehmiya badi maine wo bhi samjha jo usne bola nahi રિગાર્ડિંગ ધી વોકેશનલ એજ્યુકેશન પ્રીવિયસલી મેની યર્સ અગો SUPW, Socially Useful Productive Work ne antargat in the Kendri Vidyalayas, they had classes jyaan chokrao ne, whether it was a girl or a boy, regardless, they were taught the basic skills, ke aje tamaro nord bagdi gyo chhe, to kai rit na repair karu ho, few bulb fuse thiyo chhe, ke fuse udi gyo chhe, e padu. Now, parents no mindset, I am talking about the mindset of the parents, because that blue collar and the white collar, the colorism is getting to them. તો પેરેન્ટ્સ વેર પ્રોટેસ્ટિંગ અબાઉટ ધીસ સેઈંગ કે અમારા છોકરાઓને કારીગર નથી બનાવો સો દેટ માઇન્ડસેટ વી હેવ ટોક વી હેવ ઓફન હેવ મેની સેમિનાર્સ એન્ડ ધીસ ટાઈપ ઓફ ગેધરિંગ્સ વેર વી ડિસાઈડ અબાઉટ ધ લાઈન ઓફ એજ્યુકેશન ધ ફિલ્ડ ઓફ એજ્યુકેશન બટ વોટ અબાઉટ સમ એફર્ટ્સ ટુ ચેન્જ ધ માઇન્ડસેટ ઓફ ધી પેરેન્ટ્સ હું આઈ હેવ બીન ઇન ધ ફિલ્ડ ઓફ એજ્યુકેશન but yet i did not want my own daughter to become a teacher now i keep thinking if being educated i cannot change my mindset what can we do for the layman એટલે કોને જવાબ આપવાનો મારે દિલીપ સરે સર એનીબડી હુ હેઝ એન આન્સર ટુ ધીસ ક્વેશ્ચન બીકોઝ આઈ થિંક ઇટ્સ અ ક્રુશિયલ થિંગ બીકોઝ પેરેન્ટ્સ એજ્યુકેશન ઇઝ ઓલ્સો ધ ડિમાન્ડ ફોર ધ સ્કેલ એક વાત કહું એક વાત કહું પછી બે જણા આપશે તમે કીધું ને કે કારીગર નથી બનાવો એનો એક સરસ મજાના ઈ જ લેખામાં હું જવાબ આપું અરે યાર આ તો કારીગર માણસ છે સર એ ધેટ ઇઝ ધેટ ઇઝ ઓન્લી સર એવાય ઘણા દાખલા આપણે જોયા છે કે એકદમ સ્કિલ્ડ ડિગ્રીવાળો એન્જિનિયર જે પ્રોબ્લમ કારનો કે કંઈ સોલ્વ ન કરી શકતો એ ઓર્ડિનરી કારીગર કરી દે છે આપણે જોયા છે સમાજમાં એવા દાખલા જોયા છે ને ત્યારે આપણે બોલીએ છીએ અરે વાહ આ તો કારીગર છે હા એટલા માટે એટલા બોલીએ એટલા માટે જ કહું છું બટ એટલા માટે જ છે લેટ મી સ્પીક એટલા માટે જ છે કે સ્કિલ સ્કિલ જ છે સ્કિલ સ્કિલ ના હોય તો એ કારીગર ન હોય ટુ બી વેરી ફ્રેક ટ્રુ તમે કીધું કે બલ્બ બદલાવવાનો નળ બદલાવવાનો પણ એને સર્ટિફાઈ કર્યું ફાયદો પણ ઉઠાવે છે કે જ્યારે કોઈ એન્જિનિયર કેમ્પસમાંથી સિલેક્ટ કરે કેમ્પસ કરે અને એને લઈ જાય એટલે ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીવાળા અત્યારે તમને ખબર છે પહેલાં એવો ઝોન હતો જે લોકો અહીંયા કમ્પ્યુટર્સવાળા છે એને ખબર હશે કે બાળકોને પ્રોજેક્ટ કરવાનો હોય ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીમાં યસ બરાબર તો ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીવાળા દોડી દોડી આવીને લઈ જતા રાઇટ પછી એક એવો સિનારિયો આવ્યો કે એ પ્રોજેક્ટ કરવા માટે બાળકે એની સામેથી જવું પડે અને એના પ્રોજેક્ટ કરવાના પૈસા આપવા પડે કારણ કે ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રીવાળા સ્માર્ટ થઈ ગયા એ કે અમારું ઇન્ફ્રાસ્ટ્રક્ચર યુઝ થાય એટલે તમે તમારો પ્રોજેક્ટ અમારે ત્યાં કરવો હોય તો અમને પૈસા આપો એટલે રિવર્સ સિનારિયો ચાલુ થયો બરાબર છે એક આ સિનારિયો હતો હવે 
કેમ્પસ ઉપર આવે કેમ્પસ ઉપર આવે ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રી એટલે ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રી બાળકોને સિલેક્ટ કરીને લઈ જાય વિદ્યાર્થીઓ પ્લેસમેન્ટ અમારે ત્યાં આવે છે એટલે અમને ખબર છે અમે એના એચઆરની સાથે ડીલ કરતા હોય ત્યાં એ લોકો એમ જ કહે અમે તમારા અમારું સ્ટાન્ડર્ડ આટલું છે ટ્વેન્ટી ફાઈવ કેનું અમારું સ્ટાન્ડર્ડ છે બટ વી આર ગિવિંગ ટ્વેન્ટી કે બીકોઝ તમારું સ્ટુડન્ટ્સ છે અમે અહીંથી લઈ જઈએ એને અમારે છ મહિના ટ્રેન કરવો પડશે ટ્રુ હવે આ શું કામ શબ્દ છે ખબર છે બીકોઝ ઓફ એન એસક્યુએફ એના દસ લેવલ નક્કી છે એટલે ઇન્સ્ટિટ્યૂટને ખબર હોય કે જો મારો વિદ્યાર્થી આ લેવલનો છે અને એને હું આ સર્ટિફિકેટ આપું છું તો એ એચઆરને કહેશે ભાઈ તારી ચાર લેવલના જોબ છે ને મારો સ્ટુડન્ટ ચાર લેવલ વાળો જ છે તારે એને ઇન્ડસ્ટ્રી સ્ટાન્ડર્ડ પ્રમાણે ટ્વેન્ટી ફાઈવ કે જ આપવા પડશે ફાસ્ટ thank you sir uh, uh, let me take help of this article which i was referring uh, from uh, this padova university italy uh, brunello and rocco uh, they have written this and they have discussed this topic also this point is discussed so it is in oecd countries also this issue about the respect that uh, the white collar people get because they have taken formal education so that's why formal education is giving some special mental abilities which uh, vocational skills are not giving which is giving the skills for the hand but maybe the skills for the mind which comes with formal education is lacking with that so some respect is obviously for those who think innovatively creatively and those who keep on repairing the things huh? two things are quite different so what they said they also gave a solution they said that uh, all these people who are in vocational skills they also should be taught lifelong learning and self learning so that they keep on learning augmenting their skills also if once getting into job they stop learning then they will get rusted and so what they know at the age of 22 they will be knowing at the age of 52 also and then with the growing age the way we mature and we have are more respected that respect will not be there with that so uh, uh, we have to teach them to be lifelong learner self learner and keep on augmenting their mental capacities and the skills also then perhaps the things may change yeah. i think margi mam also has some that's okay uh, sir, sir, madam would like to contribute yeah madam tumhara question no answer aap because uh, even mare bhi 40 plus years no experience and i am also going through the same dilemma but uh, the thing is ke parents no mindset change karva mate if there is a combination of uh, society plus parents to parents ma counseling and society ma we are not jim iti and jim skill development no kai hai but apne always we highlight the pay package of uh, you know koi pan uh, person hoy to ke iim ma atlu package thayu hai but we never say ke iti na pass out chokra ne atlu thayu ke within 5 years he is earning so much You know, ए आपने क्या ही ना थी सोशल मीडिया ना थी पे सोशल मीडिया में कदाचित कोई वी गेट सम यू नो फॉरवर्ड्स सेकेंडली इटली पेरेंट्स काउंसलिंग इज हाईली नेसेसरी एंड दिस कैन बी डन ऑन वन ऑन वन बेसिस पर आमा सो था ही चाहिए कि टीचर्स ने टाइम बतो प्रोसीजरल में बहुत टाइम जाए चाहिए इटली द टाइम एंड एनर्जी इज आई वोंट से वेस्टेड बट इट इज इन અને પછી કાઉન્સેલિંગ માટે એટલી આપણા માટે શક્તિ નથી હોતી બટ આઈ થિંક ઇફ યુ ટ્રાય ટુ બ્રિજ ધ ગેપ ઇટ કેન બી ડન એન્ડ બીકોઝ આઈ એમ ગોઈંગ થ્રુ ધ સેમ થિંગ એન્ડ આઈ હેવ ઇમ્પ્લિમેન્ટેડ ઇટ હેડ વર્ક ઇટ હેઝ વર્ક ટુ અ સર્ટન એક્સટેન્ટ થેન્ક યુ થેન્ક યુ મેડમ લેટ અસ ફિનિશ ધીસ પેનલ ડિસ્કશન હિયર ઇટ સેલ્ફ યા આઈ નો દેર આર મેની ક્વેશ્ચન્સ maybe when they are off the dais you can personally uh, mingle with uh, sir and madam but this program has to go on the uh, uh, further track so i'll uh, hand over back to the uh, mocs thank you
truly an insightful and highly enlightening session. And our esteemed panelists have addressed the need of the hour. And I'm sure everybody in the house would agree that we have got a food for thought and exercise for body to make the formal education being embedded with the right proportion of vocational education right out there in our classrooms. It's now the time to appreciate the extra mile that they have gone to make this panel discussion truly an enlightening one. May I now request Sri Ramnik Lalbhai Shah, Managing Trustee of Oshwal Education Trust to present the token of love and appreciation to to the panelists, Dr. Margi Parikh, Professor, BK School of Professional and Management Studies, Gujarat University. Thank you so much, sir. With this, though we had a stream of questions to flow and though the panel discussion has tickled our minds to think that how do we really address this need of our and the nitty gritty of both formal and vocational education, here we once again thank all the esteemed panelists to make this panel discussion of OET Milestone 2022 highly enriching. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you to all the panelists and the moderator once again. Now this proves to be the most appropriate culmination of panel discussion, reinventing formal education by embedding vocational education. This will truly carve an impression for the future to come. May I please request Dr. Margi.